Hey, thanks for joining us at Connection Point Church. You know, we would love for you to stay connected and a simple way for you to do that is to subscribe so that each week you can get notified when new content goes live. We'd also love to keep in touch with you throughout the week and the best way to do this is through our Connection Point Facebook page. Now with all that being said, let's go to this week's message with our lead pastor, Zach Maddox. Welcome to Connection Point Church, and welcome to those joining us online. I'm Pastor Zach, and showing us service lead pastors here. So a couple of weeks ago, I had shared that for Christmas, I received a new backpack. I had a, an old backpack I'd had 14 years, been all over the world, but it's wore out, so I got a new one. But, but let me ask you, if, if I would have left that backpack nicely wrapped in its package, would it do me any good? No. In fact, I wouldn't have even known what it was. I needed to know what the gift was and then put it to use. I mean, think about it. If I would have left it here, I, mean, I guess I could maybe find a way to like strap it on my back, you know. That going to do any good for me? No, I, I can't put anything in it. It's just like something else to carry around. So we're going to go to Israel in uh, about a month with about 20 other people from Connection Point. And uh, so my, my oldest son's coming with me on that trip um, as a part of kind of a rite of passage year. And, and so he'll benefit from that backpack too. And there's no way I could benefit from the backpack, Nate could benefit from the backpack if I would have left it in its package. And I mentioned this to you this morning because what we'll find as we enter into a passage of scripture this morning is that Jesus, upon his ascension, he gave us gifts. He gave you a gift. But it really doesn't do any good unless you unwrap that gift and start to use it. And so we first need to look at what are those gifts and then how do we use those for the purpose that God intends. So if you have your Bible, and I hope you do, we say. If you're new to Connection Point, we say that because we want you daily in God's Word. I, I want you to have God's Word in, in, in your life. And if you don't have a Bible with you today, there's one underneath the chair in front of you. You can borrow that, read along with us. Uh, we are going to be in a different translation this morning, but you can still follow along. Uh, if you don't have a Bible at home, feel free to take that home as a gift from the church. Uh, I'm going to invite you to stand for the reading of God's Word. We're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4 as we continue our series on a great awakening this morning with an awakening in spiritual gifts. So Ephesians chapter 4, reading verses 7 through 16 today. And here's what uh, Paul, a follower of Jesus, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, he reads to the believers in Ephesus. He says, however, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. Paul writing about God, he gives us these gifts through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that Christ also descended to our lowly world. And the same who, one who descended is the one who ascended higher than all the heavens, so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. Now these are the gifts Christ gave to the church the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and pastors and teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. Then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ who is the head of the body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each part does its own special work, it helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. These are the very words of God. You may be seated this morning. I'm going to move this out of the way, or I am sure to kick it or trip on it later. If you were here uh, last week, we talked about our ability to be a part of the next great awakening by being made whole, by being healed by Jesus. You see, we knew, need a new beginning as a North American church because of the effects on, of secularism upon everyone in our culture today. So the Lord's preparing a way for a new beginning, and part of that starts with us finding the wholeness, the peace of God, the shalom that he offers every one of us. We need to find a way to live in the world, advancing the kingdom of God while not being affected by the world we live in. 
This is really important. And from our passage this morning, it says that we must not be immature like children, tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching, or influenced by people when they trick us with lies that sound like truth. So we're meant to become whole and then remain steadfast. And our passage this morning tells us how. It starts with us accepting the special gift of grace that God gave us when we became followers of Jesus. And then living that out in the context of the church body, this congregation. You've been given a gift, both for yourself and for this body. This passage helps us understand how we basically discover our life purpose. You have a purpose in life. God gave it to you. You were born for it. The question is, have you entered into it? Today's passage shows us how we do it. We discover our life purpose, first of all, by knowing our spiritual gifts. We discover our life purpose by knowing our spiritual gifts. So our passage tells us that before Jesus ascended to heaven, he gave gifts to people. He gave gifts to the disciples. He gives gifts to all of those who devote their lives to him. And it's not just any sort of gift. It's a special gift, our passage says. So I want you to understand the context that when Jesus died on the cross, when he rose from the dead, he was crowned king. He defeated our foe, the accuser. And so when it says in our passage, what Paul is writing about here, when it says that he gave gifts before he ascended, this is what he's referring to is Jesus, our conqueror. He took gifts from the accuser and he gives us these gifts from our defeated enemy as we line his victorious processional. Isn't that awesome? So those gifts were purchased at a very high price. His death on the cross made a way for us to have these gifts, victorious gifts. So why wouldn't we take and receive them? Why wouldn't we open them? Because what we're going to see as we put these gifts to use is we can arrive at the fullness of Jesus, it says, who filled the entire universe with himself. Our passage says that what what happens is, is we are lacking in our own lives and in this church by not using the gifts we've received from Jesus. We're lacking and we're not meant to. So, so what are these gifts? We find in our passage, they are apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers. So a couple of years ago, I shared before that uh, Connection Point has been hosting a annual minister's conference for pastors in the state of Indiana. And a couple of years ago, we, we hosted a professor from North Central University, Dr. Carolyn Tennant, and she wrote a wonderful book called Catching the Wind of the Spirit. And it's all about this passage. So an entire book about one passage of scripture. And what she does in this passage, she points out in ways that maybe hasn't been focused on before, is that the vast majority of teaching on this passage has usually only focused on church leadership. But the problem is, is these gifts go well beyond church leadership. They're not just for church leaders, they're for everyone. These gifts are given to each one of us the moment we decide to follow Jesus. So we first receive the gift of salvation. After we've gotten that gift, he gives us another special gift for use in the church. Now, some will use these gifts in leadership, for sure, as overseers. But I'll tell you, you want to know what the job of staff is, is to, purvey, uh, to produce ways and to help you then find avenues by which to use your gifts. That's what we're meant to do. We're almost administrators of those gifts. That's about it. They can sometimes, there's this misconception, the ministry of the church is for paid staff to do, but it's untrue. Everyone, everyone in the church body is a part of the work of the church. It's not just for a select few. It's for all of us. And if we're not plugged in and doing it, we miss out on some of the life purpose God has for us. Jesus did not just give some of us a gift. He gave all of us a gift. The question is, have we opened it? So what I'm saying is, you have a special gift. A special gift as a pastor, a teacher, an evangelist, an apostle, or a prophet. You have a special gift and Jesus means for you to unwrap it and to use it in the church. It's our job to encourage you to identify what that gift is and then to employ it for his purposes. That's what we're here for. So how do we plan to do that? Number one, 
uh, as we get into the fall, we want to, as we get into part of the series that we'll be in, we want to help you identify what are your gifts. And I'll tell you this, what we have found in the way that you really find what your life purpose is, is your unique special gift that God's given you or gifts, because sometimes those gifts are, come as a, as a combo pack. So those gifts that you've got, but the passions that God puts in your heart. But here's the third part, your story. Your story matters. You ha- are living in this day for a reason. And you need to figure out what that reason is. So we want to help you figure that out. Your gifts, your passions, and your story all converge in a wonderful way. I thought about that as we were working through this message for, for Shelley and I. Shelley and I's gifts, our passions, and our story is what has brought us to this place of being lead pastors of this church. But that holds true for all of us. All of you have gifts and passions and a story that's brought you here to this moment, but do you know what that reason is? We want to help you find it. God's given you special things for use in the church. So next year, as we uh, begin to work through as a a church, the Emotionally Healthy series and as a church-wide connect group series, we also want to help activate your spiritual gifts to help you, to help all of us become spiritually mature. So the question is, do you know what your special gift is? And if you do, are you using it? Because you can discover your life purpose by knowing your spiritual gift. But we also find that we discover our life purpose by becoming spiritually mature. We all discover our life purpose together as we become spiritually mature. You see, once those gifts are put to use, some really amazing things begin to happen. There are some incredible promises in this passage. I hope you caught them. I want to read in a different version, the message translation, to help us begin to identify what are some of the promises of what happens. Here's what Paul writes. He says, he handed out gifts of apostle, prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christ's followers in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until, until we're all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in response to God's son. Wouldn't that be amazing to see a church that operates like that? So Shelly and I, we're, we're pastor's kids. We've grown up in the church. And I can tell you, it's rare that I've seen that happen. And why is it? Because maybe we've not done a really good job of facilitating the use of God's special gifts in the church. But I think it would be wonderful. Wouldn't you like to be a part of a church like that? That rhythmically and easily works with each other, efficient and graceful in response, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. What a wonderful promise we have. As we all use these special gifts that Jesus gave us, we start moving in wonderful ways, fully mature adults like Jesus. But there's something else that we find in this passage that I think is really interesting, especially as it relates to the message we shared last week. Because Paul then continues and he writes, we will no longer be immature like children, We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like truth. Okay, that's absolutely rampant in our culture today. Lies that sound like truth. Well, we don't need that. And so here's how we have a solution for that. Instead, what we'll do is we'll speak the truth in love, growing in every way, more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. As I mentioned during last week's message, and And in our our last point this fall, we're going to enter into a church-wide connect group series on emotionally healthy spirituality and relationships because we need to enter into the wholeness that we're offered in Jesus. And so what we want to see happen is, Lord, help us be healed in your name. But also, while the time that you're doing that work in our lives, help us then become steadfast so we're no longer tossed to and fro. And how does that happen? Through spiritual gifts. I think about that in the athletic context, that somebody gets injured. So they've got to go through a process of rehab, but they don't stop there. Then they continue to do weight training so that they're strong and that injury never happens again. That's what we're seeing here in this passage. So Lord, make us whole, but then make us strong, right? Make us whole and then make us strong. We want to help everyone unwrap and use their special gifts within the church. Because the promise of scripture is as we do, it says then then we won't be tossed and blown about by our culture. We won't be influenced when culture tries to trick us with lies that sound like truth. We want to be cured from the negative effects that family and culture may have had on our lives and then become steadfast against any further future effects as well. We need both. And this happens with everyone using their God-given gifts. 
So will you be a part of the next great awakening by committing yourself to this body, to Connection Point Church, as we all walk through a process of growing mature in our faith, becoming more and more unified and purposeful as the body of Christ? I want us to think about this passage. The only way that I become spiritually mature is if you use in your gift. The only way that you become spiritually mature is if the person sitting next to you starts using their spiritual gift. Are we understanding that this morning? There was, if you go through the, the book on emotionally healthy spirituality, one of the testimonies in there is a guy who, in working through that material, realized, you know what, I, I thought I've been a 22-year Christian. He'd made a decision to follow Christ 22 years before. And he said, but what I realized was, all I had really done is made a decision to follow Jesus, and I'd been a one-year Christian 22 times. Okay, we don't want that, right? You as a 22-year-old Christian should look very different than a one-year Christian. But that only happens as we coordinate and work together to become fully mature. We need pastors and evangelists and apostles and prophets and teachers using their gifts in this body. If not, we miss out. So you're invited to discover your life purpose. Invited to be a part of the next great awakening by using your spiritual gift alongside others so we all collectively grow in Jesus together because we discover our life purpose by becoming spiritually mature. And we also discover our life purpose by fulfilling our role within the church. We become spiritually mature as we fulfill our role in the church. So the last part that Paul writes under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is that as we receive these special gifts and use them together, no longer being influenced by the world around us, Jesus will make us fit perfectly together. Wouldn't that be amazing? Our world is so divided today, incredibly polarized. Wouldn't it be wonderful for somebody to look at the church to say, well, I guess that's what unity looks like. That would be an incredible testimony to the world today. As we all do our own work, we'll help each other grow so we all become healthy and full of love, our passage says. What wonderful promises we have. And part of the reason I love this passage as a part of this series, and I shared at the very front end, the next great awakening is people moving together to share the good news in word and action, moving together in love. Love is the foundation, and it's the foundation of what happens as we use our gifts together. But at the same time, as we look at this passage, there's also implications for each one of us. The implication is that we are all meant to serve. Every one of us in the context of the local church in some way. I was uh, talking about this message uh, with some of the pastors on staff last Tuesday. And as we were talking through that content, uh, Pastor Jim and I were dialoguing back and forth about spiritual gifts and, and those in use in the local body. And he's our community life pastor and has been encouraging people and in, in identifying and using their gifts for a long time now. So I asked him if he'd be willing to just come and share some thoughts this morning. Could we welcome Pastor Jim this morning? So, uh, parents, you remember about six weeks ago, Christmas, how excited everybody was, all your kids. So looking back at all those toys that are around your house six weeks ago, uh, is everything still there? All the pieces still there? Uh, anything broken? Any batteries need replaced? You know what I'm talking about? Or, you know, maybe some of you already have uh, buyer's remorse, some of the stuff that you bought, and you thought, why, why? Or you might be like me every once in a while, you say to yourself, maybe you've said it out loud, I don't know, you might have said to your kids, if this is how you're gonna treat your stuff, I'm not gonna ever buy you a gift again. You know, you know how it is. <laughs> Thankfully, when Jesus gives gifts, he never takes them back. So he has, let me just say this again, we all have a gift and his intention is for you to have that gift and to keep that gift. He, has, he will never take that back. That's what the word of God says. But he, like Pastor is saying, you know, he's arranged for the fivefold ministry gifts of prophet, uh, apostle, pastor, evangelist, teacher to equip you in that gift. But here's what I want to say is that that gift is yours. It's your gift and your gift alone. When, when it's all said and done, it's, there's going to be a dialogue someday between you and Jesus about that gift that he's given you and what you've done with it. Um, we're not brokers, pastors, prophets, we're not brokers of those gifts. He's not going to come to us and say, what did you do? He's going, to, he's going to look at you and say, that was your gift. What did you do with that? So he's entrusted you with this gift. And so what he's wanting us to do with that gift that he's given us is to esteem it, to value it, 
and to, to pour into it, to invest into it, to search it out, find it out. And listen, we live in an era and a time when we, if we want to find something out, we'll find it out, won't we? We'll get on YouTube. We'll go, we'll go all over the place to find out. And so here's your gift. What are you going to do with this gift to make it a big deal in your life and to, make, and to optimize it, to get the most out of it, to use it the very best that you can for the body of Christ? Paul says this in 1 Corinthians 4, 2. He says, it's required of stewards that one be found trustworthy. So as a steward of that gift, he wants you to be trustworthy. He says in 2 Corinthians, he says, we appeal to you not to receive that grace of God in vain. And so we, he wants us to esteem it, to value it, to put everything that we can into it. Paul says this in Romans eleven thirteen. 13. He says, I make much of my ministry. Paul made much of his ministry. And, and so as you sit here and think about the gift that the Lord has for you, should you make much of that gift? The answer is yes, absolutely. Make much of it because if you don't, it won't become all that God intended for that, that ministry or that gift in you to be. Why? Because what God has called us to be and these gifts that he's put in us, that is what is value. That is the truest, most valuable thing that you have is that beautiful gift that he's deposit, deposited into you. And so he needs us, like Pastor saying, he needs us all to be doing what we're called to do, all of us in using those gifts in the way that we're supposed to. But the essential part of that gift is, will you esteem it Will you value it? Will you pour everything that you can into it? Because with that, there comes this sobering question that you do have to ask as you think about it in the context of all of this, is that can, can you lose that place? Just like a, a toy, I refer to toys, you know, or anything. If, if a part's missing, you know how it is. Parents, after a year, you go, this toy is really great, but it's just missing the most important part, you know, <laughs> or it's missing a leg or what, you know, and then what do you, you know, after, and then you hold on to it for so long, right? Because you think, well, I paid 50 bucks for that or 20 bucks. I can't throw it away. I'll go online and get a part, you know, to replace it. And three years later, you're still moving those toys around. You know what I'm talking about? And finally you go, you know, this thing's worthless. Throw it away. I can't do anything without that part because we need those. And, and that, it can happen. You can lose your place if it's not used. If you don't value it and, and your gift gets broken down and it's not used, then we lose our place. Just like, again, sobering thought, just like Judas and Esau. You remember Esau. The reason he blew it was because he had a birthright. It says that he despised or he didn't esteem it. He just didn't care. And so, and then you look at Judas. Judas forfeited his place in the kingdom of God because he didn't place the value on that gift that he was. Instead, he, he valued 30 pieces of silver more than the precious gift that was deposited into him, right? It says this in Psalm about, about Judas. It says, let his days be few and let another take his office and charge. New Living Translation says this, may someone else take his place of service. Because that's what will happen if we don't value that. We have a place, and God wants to do the work of his kingdom, and we have a place. But if we don't value that gift, we can't be used in the kingdom in the way that he intended for us to be used. And so let me just say again, that's your gift. What are you going to do with it? We will do our part to equip and to resource, but it's at the end of the day, there's, like I said, there's going to be a conversation where Jesus says, what did you do? Because I gave you this beautiful opportunity to be a part of the, the uh, to be a part of what I'm doing on the earth through the, through the church, and I gave you a place in that, and I gave you a gift to be able to do that. So what did you do with that? And so let me just you know I just want to encourage you because the truth is, like me and like all of us, using that gift, there are going to be times that you're going to be inconvenienced. There's going to be times that it's going to cost you. You're going to have to be places that you maybe didn't want to be because it, there's going to be conflicts of schedule and you're going to have to sacrifice and pour into it. But let me just say this, it's always worth it. At the end of the day, whatever it takes to maintain that gift and to pour into it and to, be, and to make it everything that it can be, it's always worth it. It's the, it's the highest treasure that you have. So I just want to encourage you, take your gift, value it, esteem it, use it like it's supposed to be used for the kingdom of God. Thanks, Jim. So the whole point is this, is, is you have a very important role here. You have a very important function. And we don't function properly as a church. You don't step into the life purpose God has for you without opening and using the gift God's given you. 
And I mention this here because some have had the notion, some have had the idea that they can simply devote themselves to spiritual matters on their own and not be a part of a local church. But you will not find that anywhere in Scripture. Nowhere. You may make a decision to follow Jesus alone, but we all grow in Christ together. I've said that a lot. Christianity is not a solo sport. Never was and never will be. In fact, I would put this before you, and I was thinking about how in this passage it says that we will no longer buy into the lies that sound like truth. So let me share some truth with you that our culture would share, but they twist it. You are meant to become the best version of you, and secularism would promote that, but they would also have you promote that in a way that is apart from this. The best version of you is found in this context. It absolutely is. It's found in you using the gifts that God has given you from God. God gave us a gift. Now, I don't know about you. Maybe you had great parents that gave you great gifts. There is no greater gift that you could receive than one that God would give you. Your creator, who knows you better than anyone. He gave you a gift. Now, at the same time, I would also mention here that, yes, we have roles in the community in which we live, and we should. You should make an incredible difference in this community. And I mean outside these walls. You should make a difference there. We are all meant to serve as marketplace missionaries, as everyday disciple makers in our neighborhoods and workplaces. I've said that a lot. But that does not mean that you do not have a role to fill within this context in this body. It's not an either or. It is a both and. And not because I said it, but because Jesus did. Let's be really clear this morning. Everyone has a special gift given by Jesus for use in the local church. Everyone. No one's excluded. And what it says is as we collectively use those gifts, we will then fit perfectly together. Only then will we fit perfectly together, becoming healthy and full of love. As we pursue wholeness, part of the piece is this right here. If we want to become healthy and full of love, the foundation of great awakening that the Lord's doing, then we've got to open up the gifts that God's given us. We've got to put them to use for yourself and for the sake of the person sitting next to you as well. As we use these gifts, God gets to do some wonderful things through the church. Look at these promises. It says that we fit perfectly together. And I'm telling you, I desperately want this. I want to be a part of a church like that. I want you to be a part of a church like that. But I can't do it without you and you can't do it without everybody else in this room. We need each other to see that happen. Here's what I want you to understand this morning. You are so important in this body. You are so important in the kingdom of God. Every one of you, have you stepped into that place of importance that God has given you? If not, we're missing out and you're missing out. So the question is, as we look at this, where are you serving in this local body? Where are you serving? Because every one of these gifts, there's something to be done with them. It's for equipping purposes. That day that Pastor Jim mentioned where we stand before Jesus and we give an account for the life that we've lived, what we all long to hear is those fateful words of well done. Guess what? Done requires doing. Well done. Good. Have you been good hearted? And faithful. Are you faithful? Servant. Well done. Good and faithful servant, which includes us using those gifts. And I would say maybe you don't know what your gift is yet. And that's okay. But I also know one of the best ways for you to figure out what your gift is, is to simply start serving somewhere. As you start to serve in a place, you'll start to identify, man, this really brings life to my soul and I can live in this in a way that I never thought possible before. And you can also step into a role to say, man, that is not where I am gifted. I don't belong here. <laughs> That's, but do you, you figure that out by serving. Don't sit back and wait till you figure it out. Step in and when you step in, you start to figure it out. Take the next step. Figure it out. Serve with guest services and greet others. Be a mentor to our Connection Point kids. It is awesome to serve with our kids. They say crazy things back there. It's humor every Sunday. Sometimes it's my own kids. The teachers come back and tell me. I'm like, I'm sure he did say that. That's great. <laughs> so Lord, help us. Step into a place of service. If you've got technical and creative giftings, music and production are wonderful places to serve. It doesn't really matter where you serve, simply that you begin to serve so you can start to identify what those spiritual gifts are. And the only way to do it is to start figuring out, 
and serving alongside others who actually, so our department leaders start looking to say, you know what, I see in you this. So serve alongside others to figure that out. A real simple way to do that, we put in your programs this morning, a flyer for the Next Step class. We had nine people go through this class last Sunday. We try to do it the fourth Sunday of every month for the sole purpose of helping people begin to identify their spiritual gifts. And what I loved about the group that went through last week, one of the gals that was in there, on Monday, she sends an email to six of our department leaders to say, I want to serve. Could you tell me how to do that? So she's pursuing it on her own. So don't sit back and wait. Jump in and figure it out so that your special gift can be found, begin to be used, so that we all can become mature and fit perfectly together. Because we're going to be part of the next great awakening as we discover our life purpose by knowing our spiritual gifts, becoming spiritually mature, and fulfilling our role within the church. I was working through this passage and, 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 think, and working through this message, and, and maybe you're wondering, why would we include a message about spiritual gifts within the context of a spiritual awakening? And here's the reason, because as we've been taking the last couple of years as, as a leadership team, just praying and asking, Lord, what, do we, what are you saying to the church today? This has been a big one. There has been more books, conversations, conferences, and messages about spiritual gifts in the church holistically, not just our church, but in churches across North America in the last five years than I've seen in decades. So obviously the Spirit's saying something. And our heart is, Lord, as you're beginning to awaken the church to different things, help us to just step into those spaces because we want to be a part of that awakening too. And where does that come from? We find in the, the last book of the Bible, a book called Revelation, Jesus writes seven letters to churches in what's modern day Turkey. And at the end of every one of those messages, Jesus writes, he says, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. Okay, that message was not just for that day, that message is for today as well. We have been tasked with ears to hear what the Spirit is saying so that we can appropriately insert the kingdom in the gospel in the culture we live in today. And one of those things is spiritual gifts. But every one of these messages comes from that same place. As we've been listening to the Spirit, he says, I'm calling for a new beginning, that I am consistent and the same, but my methods might be different from this generation to the next. As we enter into a new beginning to say, here's the effects of culture today, you need to enter into a place of healing and wholeness. And by the way, as you seek that healing and wholeness, let's firm up the faith, and that happens through spiritual gifts. And by the way, those spiritual gifts, when they're employed well, that's the gospel where you're living in my story, because my history, human history, is God's history of what he's been doing in, in the lives of people throughout the generations. So we talk about awakening to the gospel, and then we awaken to what is the Jesus method of making a difference of mentoring, and ending with, let's take a look at what God's doing to create movement in the world today in his church. So all of these messages are simply us trying to say, Jesus, we want to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying, and then we also want to have feet that are quick to obey. To hear and not obey is to never have really heard. So we're going to be obedient and follow what the Lord is doing. And our hope is that you enter into that awakening for yourselves, for your sake and for the sake of this body and for other churches that need to experience an awakening too. I want to tell you, we really have exciting days ahead. Our best days are yet in front of us. And I can't wait to see what God does with this body and with others across our nation as they step into the work that the Lord is doing today. I'd like to invite you to stand as we close in song this morning. The music team is going to return to the platform and as you're standing, maybe you're here today and you realize that the reason you have yet to step into an awakening in your own heart is because you've never made a decision to devote your life to Jesus. And that's where everything starts. Everything starts for you in your soul that you experience a spiritual awakening as you turn your life over to Jesus to say, Jesus, I just want to follow you. Maybe you need a new beginning personally, and that new beginning starts with Jesus. Maybe you need wholeness and healing in your life, and, and that comes through Jesus and the peace of God in your life and the, the shalom, the wholeness he offers. And maybe you don't know what your gift is, and you can't know what that gift is until Jesus gives it to you as you make a decision to follow him. So where do you find yourself this morning? Would you say, I, I want to devote my life to Jesus to step into that new beginning, to be able to receive the special gift that he gives, because he gives good gifts. So with every head bowed in this room, if that's you today and you'd say, I want to follow Jesus, I want to devote my life to him, I want to receive the gifts that only he can give, I want to experience the wholeness that only he can bring, who here today would say, that's me? 
want to follow Jesus. I want to experience wholeness and healing. I need a new beginning today. I want to receive the gifts that only he can bring. Anybody here today that would say, that's me. Up here in the front, anybody else that would say, that's me. Who here today needs a new beginning? Who here today needs healing that only Jesus can bring? Jesus, I pray for the person that raised their hand and for others in this room. Lord, that need a new beginning. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you'd give it to them. Lord, I pray for those in this room that are in need of healing and wholeness. I pray, Jesus, you bring wholeness to their life today. God, I, I pray for those that maybe have, have yet to receive and unwrap that gift that you've given. I pray, Jesus, that they would begin to explore that gift as an apostle, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, evangelist. I pray, Jesus, that you would help us all to identify our gifts, to begin to use them for service in the local church, for the building up of the body of Christ, that we all become like you, healthy and full of love. And Jesus, I pray as we continue to look at the awakening you're bringing, of understanding what the gospel is, the good news that we can share, and, and the good news that we receive by being in your kingdom. Lord, I, I pray as we better understand the, the methods you employ to see your kingdom advanced and pouring into the lives of people. I, I pray, Jesus, that you would awaken our hearts to the movement that you're bringing about, and Lord, that we would accept the invitation we all have to step into it. Jesus, I pray as we close in song this morning, as we talk about obedience, Father, that, that being your love language, I pray, Jesus, that we would love you well by obeying you, Jesus. Help us devote our lives to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Pastor Mark's going to be here up at the front for, for those that raised their hand or for those that maybe wanted to or have questions about what it looks like to devote your lives to Jesus. As we close in song this morning, I would just invite you, come out of your seat from where you're at, meet with Pastor Mark or other prayer team members. We'll, we'll fill in as well as we've got people responding to, to a time to say, Jesus, I want to devote my life to you. I want to better use the gift that you've given me for your purpose in your kingdom. Well, let's sing.